May I come in, sir? Yes, please. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Anjum, please take your seat. Thank you, sir. So, uh, how are you, Anjum? I'm good, sir. Thank you. So, you must be aware that uh, the tragic uh, episode unfolded by COVID-19 pandemic second wave is still not over. Yes, sir. So, we are maintaining safe, uh, you know, social distancing norms. Yes, sir. And uh, you are at a safe distance wearing mask. So, you are at liberty to take a call whether you want this conversation in mask or without mask. Sir, so, can be without mask. Okay, fine. If it can be. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. So, should we start the conversation? Yes, sir. Uh, tell us something about yourself uh, so that we should not, you know, peep into your uh, detailed application form and we should have fair idea about what kind of personality we are going to interact in next uh, 20 to 25 minutes. Sir, sir I am Manzar Hussain Anjum. I am a resident of uh, Islampur. It is uh, a city in the Uttar Dinajpur district of West Bengal. This region lies towards the north, northern West Bengal. And so I have done my schooling from there itself, high school. I have done my 11th and 12th from Aligarh Muslim University and uh, after that I have completed my engineering in a BTMT dual degree from IIT Kanpur. Thereafter I worked in a firm uh, in Mumbai as a programmer analyst and uh, since then I have been preparing for civil services. So what has been basically the motivation uh, for joining uh, the civil services? Sir, uh, in the latent form I would say uh, coming from a rural area being good at studies, I was always, people would tell that uh, uh, you would be an IPS. Although they didn't know what it meant, neither did I. Okay. So, so this that, motivation has been, uh, you know, uh, from the very beginning when you got into senses about uh, the career options that is open to somebody who is a graduate, right? Yes. So why did you choose civil engineering uh, as a career then? Because sir, it is a professional course. And you are making a drift from what could have been your, you know, genuine uh, choice. Yes, sir. You have done your graduation in engineering. You are aspiring to be a civil servant. And at the same time, you, the subject that you have opted is geography. So, can you please explain this paradox, I would say. Sir, uh I would say my, during my schooling, sir, uh, I had uh, no one to look forward to. Uh, it was a rural area. So uh, the motivation that I took was from uh, my immediate uh, classmate who said he would go to the IITs. I didn't know what IIT meant at that time. So I also took that decision and got into the IITs. I started preparing well and fortunately I got good guidance in AMU. But sir, getting into civil services, it manifested in my fourth year, sir where I was sure that I want to get into it. There was an uh, incident, sir, as while I was serving as the mess secretary of my hall. So there were 36 workers and uh, their PF have been uh, struck for uh, like one year. They didn't receive that. So I, along with other hall executive council members, we interacted with uh, the administration of the campus, administration outside the Provident Fund office, EPF office. So after that, I felt that uh, I should go towards this uh, civil services. Okay. Uh, you must be aware that uh, uh, Taliban has now become a you know, new political reality, right? Yes, sir. Given to the principled stand of government of India that uh, we will not be talking to any country, rather we will not be having you know, any diplomatic relations with any country which, uh, which, which actually you know, harbors terrorism or you know, abates terrorism to other lands. So, uh, what will be the approach of uh, Indian government while engaging with uh, Afghanistan? Well, we have, uh, you know, huge, you know, interest at stake in Afghanistan. So, for now, our stand should be evacuation of the people that we are already doing. That's fine. This is a short term, uh, you know, uh, goal and for so Indian government. In the long term, uh, we can have dialogue with like-minded nations. For example, we have uh, the Quad. We have. USA, we, ha we also have to interact with our immediate neighbors, that is Pakistan and China, so that they do not reap benefits out of this situation. So, to ca can India. we afford, uh, afford to, you know, disengage any, any kind of, you know, uh, engagement with uh, Afghanistan uh, on, on, on the lines what we have been doing with Pakistan? So, there can be a back-channel diplomacy, sir, where our bureaucrats uh, uh, go and talk to them through some other country. For would example. it would it amount to would it tantamount to any kind of compromise with our principal stand? 
Yes, sir. So far we had a stand that uh, we would not interact with uh, Taliban, a terrorist organization. But given, sir, that uh, it is going to be uh, declared to be the government of the day in Taliban, in Afghanistan, so we have to interact with them. We so have in to ensure international that relations, basically, you are suggesting we need to be more, you know, pragmatic. Yes, sir. Our, our approach should be goal-oriented, right? Yes, sir. The goal is strategic interest, sir. That should be secured first. We have the threat of uh, Taliban increasing terrorist activities in uh, our northern region, that is the state of Kashmir. There can be rise of drug trafficking as well. So we need to ensure that these things don't happen. Thank you, Mr. Anjum. Sir, please. Manjir. Yes. You are the student of geography. Yes, sir. And you belong to uh, Uttar Dinajpur. Can you mention the latitude and longitude of Uttar Dinajpur? Sorry, sir. I'm not aware of that. Okay. And can you mention the surrounding districts of Uttar Dinajpur? Yes, sir. Towards the north, it is the Darjeeling district. And towards the south uh, is the South Dinajpur district. And what about east and west? Uh, towards the east, towards the east is Bangladesh, sir. That is the Dinajpur district. Yes. And uh, towards the west, we have uh, Kishanganj district from the state of Bihar. Bihar. And only one district? Sir, I'm not aware of the other. Okay, one. you are not aware of it. Okay. Uh, looking the media, they are uh, preaching us for so many changes in our life and, uh, and, and, ev and everything. And when we look the female participation in media, the print in print media, the participation is nearly 13%. And when we look the digital media, the participation go up by 26%. So is media using the face, not the mind of females? Sir, uh, I, have, like, I have heard it for the first time, sir. And, so, uh, I'm, that's why I'm giving the data to you. And now I want to, uh, uh, your opinion on that one. Sir, uh, if we look at the faces of the media right now, the, the channels that are being shown on TV, so we see there is uh, like a dominance of uh, male media persons, what we have seen. And uh, that is one of the thing. Also, sir, I feel there is uh, like they climb up the ladder in, me in media. So it is easier when we get into digital media where uh, more like women have more access. Everyone has access and women find it better to express themselves on digital media. But when it comes to normal regular media, then they have to come through a process where they have to go to different places which may threaten their security uh, for that purpose. So maybe that is one of the reasons. Even the, in the advertisement of saving foam, we are using the female. Why? I'm unable to think about it, sir. Okay. Uh, my next question is, Husanity is the humanity. There is a slogan. What means it? So, uh, I have not heard it, but if you allow me, I can... Yes. So, Husainity, uh, I think if I go epidemiologically, then, uh, then sir, it means uh, the way of Hussain. So, Hussain was uh, one of the religious leaders of Islam. Uh, he uh, and Muharram is celebrated on, his, on the death of uh, uh, Muha uh, Hussain. And it, it is started. Yes, sir. So I think it is uh, Husainity is pertaining to sacrifice, I would say. Yes. He gave, gave his life uh, for the sake of uh, spread of Islam, for the fight of Islam. So I think sacrifice, it, it means sacrifice is uh, the way of humanity. Uh, my last question from my side. Shahada, Shalat, Shwam, Jakat. These are the four things. Arrange and Hajj. Arrange it in a priority manner. Which one are important for any Muslims in India? Arrange those fives. Sir, as per uh, the Islamic Foundation or? Yes, yes, definitely. Sir, uh, Salat is said to be the first foundation that is uh, offering namaz. And uh, then the next is, sir. Uh, you, are, you are putting Salat. Why not Sahada? 
Sir, Why not Sahda? I'm not aware of the term, sir. Because it is believe on the Allah. Yes, sir. Yes, so sir, that it is should primary. be first. Yes, sir. That is the primary, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Manjar. Hello, Anju. Yes. Anju, uh, in India, two third of the population falls below the age of thirty-five years. Yes, sir. But uh, still, we have very low WPR working population ratio. Why is it so? Sir, most of our economy is on in the unorganized sector. Do you know what is working population ratio? Since you are yes, geography sir. student, sir, I think you must know it. The people that are getting job, like there are many people who are searching jobs, and the people who get jobs. If the ratio is taken, then that is the working with population. Uh, total population or total labor force. Total people who are looking uh, for jobs, or with the total population. So I have to look at it, sir. Okay, Anjum. Uh, if I say uh, the good and uh, moderate monsoon brings prosperity in agriculture, do you agree with me? Yes, sir. To some extent, obviously. yes, sir, that is obvious. But if I say good and moderate monsoon have the adverse effect on the Indian farmers, how will you justify my statement, sir? Like, if I go by statistics, sir, fifty-five percent. of the agriculture is dependent on monsoon and this dependence has not gone monsoon has been known for its erratic nature but uh, i am saying that it is a, the monsoon is good and moderate so why are you taking the erratic monsoon so i couldn't understand that. i'm sorry sir so i asked a wrong question so i'm not able to comprehend the question sir okay uh, now coming to the erratic monsoon yes sir how the erratic monsoon affect the monetary and fiscal policy of the of in india yes sir sir monsoon is related to agricultural production so uh, a lot of rural distress as we know 48% of the workforce is involved in agriculture so if the monsoon you got my question yes sir how the erratic monsoon so uh, it 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 affects uh, agrarian economy sir in the rural areas Mm -hmm. and uh, as a result uh, there is a lot of poverty i'm sorry sir i'm not able to comprehend the question okay leave it sir please thank you manjar yes sir you have written hamdard study circle in your address right tell me something about it what is it sir uh, hamdard Ed education society uh, was set up by janab uh, sayed hamid sir and uh, he was uh, a bureaucrat okay pre independence and post independence so after his retirement he served as the vice chancellor of amu and then he formed hamdard education society as a trust based organization which could work towards the improvement of the backward socially and economically backward people so he opened a so school so it, it's a trust yes sir or civil society yes sir have you heard the term civil society can you define it sir civil society uh, is an organization mm. uh, that that is run by uh, like the people mm. i would say on no profit no loss no basis profit, no loss basis right for so for a group of people or uh, for the welfareism of each and every one so for a group of people essentially okay okay fine uh can you tell me something about the academic culture of uh, amu sir uh, amu sir like it has been known for that ganga jamuna tazib that mm. we talk the prevalence of urdu mm -hmm. so academically also uh, urdu is being taught there for example in classes uh, urdu is one of the mandatory subjects mm. in some classes so academically that is there and sir there is also the urdu research society there mm. Uh, that is can you point out some examples for uh, uh, hindu muslim assimilation is there yes sir i, I think it is there sir the, there is uh, uh, no friction i would say sir and uh, we have uh, hostels also where uh, so uh, we are hearing all the rumors around sir i would say that is more of a uh, political rhetoric uh, rather than coming from the students if it it had come from the students 
then that would have been a problem however sir uh, the empowerment of women had become an issue there when the women were not allowed into the main library mm. so that was one of the things that was raised by the students and that was even addressed when uh, the courts uh, allowed the women to enter the library okay manjar i would like to test your uh, ability to critically critical assimilation how you assimilate yourself right just suppose uh, you are a superintendent of police in a district uh, in your district hindu muslim right has taken place right and a group of citizen feel and uh, they criticize with comment that uh, you are favoring uh, a community or some minority community in that situation how you will handle the situation and how to uh, achieve the trust and confidence of the citizens sir uh, how you will be able to achieve or restore the trust this is most important that keep in mind so the first thing that i must do is do things impartially mm -hmm. because if i am already at fault at conscience mm -hmm. then th that would definitely be seen mm -hmm. so that shouldn't be there that's why i am asking and uh, the second thing sir uh, like whatever the process is like mm. section 144 etc i would do that impartially mm. the third thing sir is confidence building that i will do with my team uh, i will talk to the leaders who are involved uh, in that issue uh, leaders, leaders regarding sides. religious leader or political leader religious as well as political leaders sir fine and uh, the channel would be through political leaders because i cannot approach them directly so i i would uh, go through the uh, political leaders and talk to the religious leaders and whatever is the solution i would try to find that amicably by building confidence that uh, i am not on the side of anyone hmm. do you believe that community policing is one of the uh, most important uh, tools for the settlement of such kind of yes, situation hmm. can we tell uh, can you tell me something about it sir uh, community pol policing essentially involves the people of the community mm. and uh, since they are already into the community so they already have that confidence as what kind of people they are and uh, they have public relations which ensure that they secure the the security of that region so uh, if there is community policing sir that will nip the issue in the bud itself uh, because they are also known to provide information beforehand so if uh, there is a probability of a situation arising for example violence or conflict so they would be the first one to report to the higher authorities and then they can take action so i think that would be a good initiative okay manjar my last question is rti is doing something or uh, exp uh, experiment of rti is a fiasco or it's a big hit failure what is your opinion sir uh, i think it is doing its part sir it has been instrumental in uh, uh, like providing us information uh, especially uh, the people who are not empowered right so, and uh, it has also helped uh, get out some uh, like scams as well mm -hmm. like the coal scam etc mm. so the there are some inherent problems sir that needs to be addressed like uh, the uh, like the public authorities hmm. they don't publish information hmm. uh, public on the public uh, platforms so that is one of the problem that needs to be addressed uh, secondly sir the denial of information there has to be a pro proper protocol for the denial of information and shouldn't be arbitrary as it has been done right thirdly sir i feel most of us like even i have filed an rti hmm. so we are not aware about what kind of questions we should ask so it has come but uh, it it has crippled us in the sense that uh, even i am not able to write an write a question so there should be a platform which should teach that uh, what is the right procedure what kind of questions can be asked so that can be done apart from it sir at the institutional level i uh, there has been a crisis at the institutional level because ics are not appointed there has been a vacancy there so that must be appointed that must be fulfilled very good very satisfied uh manzer what is the meaning of your name sir uh, it means uh, a view or a picturesque and sometimes it is also used in the sense that uh, 
to address a series of events okay so uh, recently a cyclone had hit west bengal and parts of uh, odisha which cyclone was that amphan no after amphan yes yes okay uh, which country had named it and uh, what is the meaning of yes yes i think it was named by oman sir and it means jasmine jasmine or tree huh? yes sir All right and uh, after this cyclone there was also a po- political cyclone in west bengal yes sir between uh, the center and the state government the relations have not been very smooth yes sir uh, what was the issue sir uh, there was a meeting called between uh, the prime minister honorable prime minister of india and the honorable chief minister of the state so uh, the issue was revolving around uh, the uh, chief secretary of the state mr alapan banerjee so according to protocol he should have been present uh, so why was he not present and was the center uh, right in taking action against him yes sir the reason he cited was that uh, he he was sent to some place else by the chief minister of the state so uh, if if i go by protocol sir he is the highest civil servant of the state and he he should be present there to meet and receive the honorable prime minister so as a, as a neutral observer what do you think like was the state government right in uh, protecting uh, the chief secretary or was the center right in taking action against the chief secretary only one of these things could be uh, true or correct sir uh, i feel uh, it cannot be said to be right or wrong i would i would say the both se- sides cannot be right both sides cannot be wrong sir i feel that both sides were wrong on some part the state was wrong in the aspect that uh, hindered the chief secretary from performing his functions and sir i would say the state the center was wrong in uh, providing him an extension of 3 months first and then disposing him off because that uh, portrait is a picture where it sees that uh, shows that uh, the center is being vindictive about some action right man sir uh, if we talk about uh, india bangladesh relations can you tell me like what are the three things that you feel are very good in the relations and uh, three things which you feel are a big concern in india bangladesh relations so good things i would say there is a cultural connect sir right uh, because second uh, we ha- and uh, second thing sir the tourism uh, bangladesh is the second largest uh, we have second okay. largest tourists from there and uh, third as a neighboring country i would say sir we are dependent our economies are dependent on each other okay and, concerns uh, for concerns sir uh, like we have a mutual concern that is of uh, the climatic origin cyclones etc second is sir uh, the rise of china uh, as an investment center it is looking towards bangladesh as an invest- investment center and third thing sir uh, we have conflict of border and uh, tista river other kind of examples okay my final question to you uh, like uh, recently india chaired this uh, un security council yes sir and uh, prime minister modi chaired it and he has given a five point uh, framework for maritime security uh, can you name uh, a few yes sir so firstly uh, he talked about maritime connectivity the country should be uh, connected second thing maritime security sir in the uh, sense that uh, it should be secure from pirates piracy uh, third third thing was security from climate change sir climate change related maritime dialogue uh, fourth was a rule based order where uh, the country should abide by the international laws like the unclos thank you manjar uh, mr manjar if i if i can recall correctly you said uh, when you were introducing yourself that uh, the final you know uh, passion to aspire for civil services came from the advices of your friends Yes sir. They uh, saw a civil servant in you. They were saying you you look like an IPS officer and you will become one one day, right? Why did you choose to betray their aspiration? They wanted you to be IPS officer and you have filled IAS as your first preference. I can understand it is uh, very natural for everybody to go for choice number 1 as IAS. Didn't you factor in the aspiration of your you know uh, childhood friends? sir it was from the people of my village sir uh, I, i wanted to i mean the people of my village sir 
my village sir if 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 i tell you the scenario people are not educated there i am in fact i am the first engineer from my village so they had not heard about is they don't even know what upsc is they have heard about ips and every officer that they so see they if call that is IPS. the case you know i can tell you and i can vouch for it uh, uh, being an ips officer has you know a conspicuous presence in the society people identify there are many people uh, as uh, you have mentioned that uh, you know a large percentage of the population that you belong uh, from is not very educated and they how how do they you know understand uh, the bureaucracy they understand bureaucracy by uniform so so th this is the man he is running the show and the ips officers we are uniform so in that way also as per their understanding the post of ips officer is uh, far uh, more lucrative uh, than this ias so personally i feel that getting into the services i am looking at the objective why i want to get into services Be after like i served at the, as the mess secretary after helping the uh, the the mess workers there i realized that uh, i could have more impact if i if i am in the administration and then when i learned about it i felt that uh, the indian administrative services so is it about making impact in the society or you know uh joining a platform wherein uh, you have you know multiplicity of exposure you can do many many things for lot many people yes sir what is what is your motivation sir it is uh, having an impact uh, in multiple fronts sir, where i can help many people okay now tell me one more thing why you have you know preferred you know uh, group b services over some you know very attractive group a services so because they provide that uh, platform sir public interaction Uh, I, I have filled uh, the why why then this this uh, disliking for pondicherry police service and pondicherry civil services you have given preference to danips and daniks yes sir but not the same kind of you know dignity and stature you have accorded to pondicherry police and civil service respectively sir uh, i felt uh, they were limited to one region or one union territory that is why i felt that. so in danips also you will be you know posted throughout your uh, life in delhi so there has been change in cadres as what well what has been the change tell me sir uh, like there is the central deputation as well in that and uh, also sir uh, in Dan danips sir there is not just delhi sir there is uh, very good you are from west bengal right so uh, nandigram is one uh, you know assembly constituency which was very much in news when we were you know having this uh, assembly elections there in west bengal because that seat was contested contested by uh, uh, the current chief minister of uh, west bengal can you please tell me why this was in news sir nandigram was in news uh, due to the rise of mamta banerji if we see uh, the will, there did was she, did she win that seat this year she didn't win sir and earlier she fought from some other uh, constituency Okay. Okay. Fine. I I got it. Now tell me, if somebody loses a seat, what are uh, the options open to the candidate, the losing candidate, to file a petition in any court of the law by way of uh, election petition? What are what are the provisions? Can you please briefly tell me? Means that within how many days of declaration of result the petition can be filed? Is there any compulsion as to this petition has to be decided within a particular time frame or so on? So You are not aware about this. my last question to you you are from aligarh muslim university yes, and that has been recognized as a minority institution right can you it it has not been declared yet sir uh, it has not been declared as a minority institution yes sir it has okay. not been declared uh, i i need to ch check it uh, then okay presume it is a minority institution yes sir can you please tell me is there any connection between minority institution and operation of uh, right to education act sir they are at liberty to not apply the right to education the minority education all all provisions of right to education will be exempted from operation in uh, minority institutions so the reservation of uh, uh, seats that has been done specifically sir i have to look into it sir I'm okay put... my my last question uh, before i let you go see when we say uh, if uh, wealth is lost nothing is lost if uh, health is lost something is lost and if character is lost everything is lost the last uh, phrase if character is lost everything is lost is more particular for a bureaucrat how uh, how do you uh, you know see this what is your comment on this yes sir so character is something that defines oneself and uh, 
if if we are out of character then uh, we have that uh, loss of conscience as well where we uh, tend to lose sight of our goals our ambitions uh, the purpose that we have so uh, if that is lost sir then sometimes we feel that uh, the entire purpose of life what we are going to do is lost so in a way uh, it is rightly said that when character is lost everything is lost okay gentlemen your interview with this comes to an end uh, it was really nice talking to you on a range of issues you can go now thank you thank you sir thank you sir please take your seat manjar thank you sir so uh, how are you feeling now so i'm feeling fine sir. and how was it it was bad sir is is this the maiden opportunity that you are knocking at the gates of upsc it is, is it for the first time no sir i appeared in the interviews last year as well so put up put off your mask so what went wrong uh, last year sir i was selected in the reserve list uh, although i didn't get a service okay so uh, i was i had a high bmi i was 2 kilo overweight and uh, in the final result i wasn't selected i was given 6 months extension to get a remedical done okay but uh, since so i was so not selected you did not do away with 2 kg of weight uh, yes sir it is a doable task gentlemen it was do- i had done it sir but uh, there was give- i didn't go for the remedical thinking that i wouldn't have missed the cut off by one mark that oh. was carelessness from my side hard luck so the ma- generally ordinarily the marks and how much how much marks uh, did you get last time I got one seventy three in the. So the marks that you get was you know proportionate to uh, your performance, right? Uh, our observation is also that you know had this hard luck not uh, been with you, you would have been selected last year itself. See why? Because you have been a very honest and well prepared candidate. When honest, uh, because uh, see, one one instance I would like to quote. You have been you know repeatedly uh, saying. one important assignment though it was a very small assignment but it is important because you did it at a time when you know many are reluctant to do that mess secretary uh, uh, assignment that you did you have been mentioning it you know time and again that speaks volumes about your honesty and how connected you were to all uh, you know assignments that came your way maybe from looking at the other side those assignments were non descript or small or you know trivial but yes uh, you have been a very uh, honest person this is suggestive of that your conversation is very engaging and uh, your uh, situation based you know uh, handling of uh, questions is also uh, flawless we were we happy that uh, uh, you uh, had that critical assimilation in your personality that you you are getting the sense of the question and what what is uh, there at the core of the question what is the expectation of the question and you are doing justice to that i you know layered approach is uh, there with you which is helping you to you know meticulously solve any situation based questions and you know, taking into account various dimensions that is there so and yes the bandwidth of knowledge is also very uh, impressive including your uh, command and analysis over you know latest uh, and contemporary developments taking place in international arena so that is there yes uh, see uh, whenever uh, any question uh, is coming to you and that question uh, uh, is uh, factually incorrect right so they are you know polite and humble ways to recorrect uh, uh, the person right so uh, i was also not aware that uh, this uh, minority institution tag has been withdrawn from aligarh muslim university fine then uh, if you if you you know if you respond in a very polite fashion so to the best of my knowledge sir i have read sir if, if you just start by asking sir sir i know this is it uh, true that the status has been withdrawn okay, and sir. it is no longer a minority institution still sir i will attempt this yes, question sir. see don't hurt don't you know uh, try uh, ever uh, inadvertently or deliberately to hurt the sentiment of any of the board members yes. right so that is there this is this is i am just telling you as a value addition and a little, little bit of you know a smile on your face uh, here and there fine makes uh, the conversation more reciprocative uh democratic Sir, and engaging i will blank in some questions like no, fine so, this happens so you know some questions like uh, last question was uh, uh, about this you know if health is uh, lost wealth is lost character is lost so that was uh, something which you i i can well understand 
you were trying to put in some you know philosophical perspective and you know a, a very uh, genuine explanation to that uh, quote and in that uh, uh, particular moment you were struggling to find some you know something right. so that was very much evident on your first it happens it is very normal thing you have all uh, the qualities that uh, we are looking for in a uh, civil servant so please consolidate your confidence be more cheerful enjoy the process of interview the day will be yours and you will be there in the elite list all the best yes, sir sir i also wanted to ask the i still don't understand the question sir like there was the fiscal and monetary fiscal is uh, by giving loans uh, was you looking for that answer actually erratic monsoon um, has an adverse effect on the indian farmers yes sir because uh, if the erratic monsoon will be there the production will be less yes. the prices of uh, food grain will be rise yes. then the rise of inflation will be there it will impact the monetary policy and if the production will be low the government will give the huge subsidies to the farmer it will affect the fiscal policy of the government also yes sir and the second question uh, the good monsoon or moderate monsoon has an adverse effect on the indian farmers why is it so because if the good monsoon will be there production will be huge uh, at the time of production. harvesting there will be a huge supply of food grain and it will reduce the price of the food grain that will impact the farmer adversely yes sir yes sir yeah i get it. thank you sir great thank you sir all the best thank you sir thank you sir